Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the report from Tiger Mountain. Here we are at an undisclosed location. Mm -hmm. Once again, David and I sitting before the grand chessboard here on the report from Tiger Mountain. Stick around and listen. We're here to discuss the forever pandemic. The forever Ooh. pandemic, David. Here we are. It seems to we're over a year now. We're near the yeah. end of March. We're heading at the first of April is tomorrow. Time has stood still. It's the day not, the earth stood still. What's yes. going on, mate? Tell me what's going on. I mean, this you are actually you're one of the first people that said this could go on forever. I remember when this began. You this could this could be a while. And uh, here I, we are. I think. Look, I, I I hope to be wrong. I absolutely. I'm, I'm so happy to be wrong about so much of this stuff. Yes. But to me, it seems obvious that we are s slowly in some ways but not in others but surely definitely surely moving into totalitarianism i think so i mean uh, you know they they, they it would seem obvious <coughs> to me at least that they have a five or maybe a ten year plan which, which will end up as complete control of our society uh, you mm -hmm. know on the most nuts and bolts sort of infinitesimal kind of level it seems that it's heading this way i mean i often say to people you know, people give me the usual ABC, Guardian, Razzmatazz, yes. blah, blah, crap. And I go, actually, I feel like it's 1917 in St. Petersburg or 1949 <laughs> in Shanghai. You know, I, I'm sure it would have actually felt quite similar in a lot of ways. Yes. You know, there would have been all these excuses of, oh, it's for your own safety and security, you know. And, yep. and people who disagree or dissent are a, a danger to the body politic. You know, yes. They're a danger yes. to the, the health of society. Yeah. I'm sure a lot of the rhetoric would have been remarkably similar, actually. So know? as far as you're concerned, we are we are heading into a kind of totalitarian... Um, I hope to be wrong. Of course, of course. Yeah. I mean, we all hope to be wrong on that topic. But, I mean, it does seem to have gone... I mean, if you look, if you look at, I guess, what you'd call historical uh, ante well, antecedents, is how you pronounce that word? Yeah. Um, you know, obviously there was the, the pandemic of uh, 1919. That went on for about a year or two. So you can understand maybe you can get a second year out of it because of a pandemic by Peter, but if it's still around with, uh, at the beginning of 2022, I mean, this is just going on and on. And, and not only that- I think, I think you're being far too generous here. Yeah. You know, far, 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 far too generous. I mean, I would, I would posit there's a couple of models that you can use to predict reasonably accurately how things are gonna play out. Mm -hmm. And the first one of those models is everything that, you know, in a real pandemic, there would be a great danger quote unquote of the government and authority and institutions losing control yes. losing some power yep. now we've seen the exact opposite of that yes we've yes, seen yes. governments accrue in fact massive unprecedented powers yes. you know governments now tell you who you can have in your home if yes. you can work or not yes. these are extraordinary powers that they've you know taken have um, you noticed too that even well, before no, but my point is you you, every step of the way, governments and authorities and institutions have accrued more power. Yes. Okay? This is unusual. In a time of actual crisis, mm -hmm. there would be a, a situation where they might actually lose power. You know? No, of course. So and you can use that to predict what's going to happen next. And everything, I, everything they do, everything that happens, will accrue more power to centralised power. This is yeah. true. And yeah. it, it, we've obviously, seen this. we've seen a huge atomization of people into kind of like, you know, I mean, all, all forms of collective activity have basically stopped, unless it's some kind of Black Lives Matter protest, which is uh, apparently unless uh, it's officially part of sanctioned. the officially sanctioned like division, which is yeah. yet more division for every, yet more atomization for everybody. Um, um, you know, it's another topic, really. But like, it, it, there are weird things that have been in place in the, the, before the pandemic even appeared. I mean, the, well, the way banking had, you know, banking had, had changed. You know, where you go into banks, there's no tellers anymore. It's just, you know what I mean. And you do most of your banking sure. online. Um, even the whole online culture itself, and the fact things like Netflix, sure. the fact sure. that. You know, you really don't need to go to the movies anymore. Like, exactly. all your entertainment there's, comes out of that There's computer. all these lines, uh, which are, in, by themselves seem yeah. somewhat innocuous, but not really, but yeah. somewhat innocuous. But they've all met right here and mm. right now. All these lines of technology, all this incredible surveillance yes. that they had to rush through because of the threat of terrorism yes. incorporated, and so, so yes. forth, and so on. All of this mass surveillance stuff they have to, they've had to rush through, yes. all of these other quite draconian things, they all had to happen in such a hurry, didn't they? Yes. You know, you know, even things like this, uh, you, you might even not remember it, you know, because time has sort of stood still in mm. such a weird way, but there was all this uh, hoo-ha like a year and a half ago about my health record. This, yes. I could pull out a thousand examples of this. 
the government apparently had spent five billion dollars. Yes, yes. Constructing a data, but five billion dollars on a database. I know, I know. Are you I know. serious? I know. It's, it's like, like they knew it was coming. Health record. I know, I know. There's so many things, and obviously before There's the hundreds pandemic, hundreds of these lines that all intersect now. I mean, like Anthony Fauci said there will be a pandemic before the end of you know Donald Trump's first term. I mean, how does how would you know that? Bill Gates had been harping on about this. I mean, obviously there was that operation that took place at, um, what's the name of that university in Baltimore, um, Johns Hopkins. Uh -huh. They did like a simulation, I think it was called uh, Event 201 or event, something, something, like, something that. like that. Yep. Um, that they, they did like a kind of sim on a, on, a, on a kind of pandemic exactly. And when it finished, then the real one launched. And also there was the quote from Soros. <laughs> funny that. Funny that. <laughs> funny that. I remember someone was talking to Soros about it. And I don't know, I think talking about globalism versus nationalism. Uh -huh. And he said, I think in February or something, he said, well, you know, whatever the, whatever's happening, it, it's too late. The train has left the station. That mm -hmm. was the quote. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, he just kind of dismissed it. Uh -huh. It's like, listen, whatever you thought might be happening, it's, it's, it's finished. Yeah. You know, like the train's left the station. Mm -hmm. I think he was referencing COVID. I've no idea. But yeah. it's, it's kind of ominous. And um, Well, just think back all these biosecurity laws, which have made this possible. Because all this stuff... All these draconian things, the curfews, the lockdowns, all this crazy nonsense yeah. has all bypassed Parliament. It's all gone around Parliament yeah. because it's, it's all set into law or yeah. regulation by it seems the to chief bypass health, of, health officer. Many yeah. of our constitutions, not only, I mean, particularly the American um, constitution, which, um, you know, it puts direct limits on, what, you know, on power. I mean, you know, they've been able sure. to lock down. And also the lockdowns seem to have done no good, like that Florida, which remained open for the whole pandemic, never closed lockdown at all. It has done probably better than than like uh, California, which well, has equally There's an obvious weather. reason for that. Right. It's a mirage. Yes. You know, I mean, as, as, as the popular meme is gone, you turn yep. off your television. Yeah, it goes and away. And for the vast majority of people, it just evaporates. Yeah, you know? I know. What pandemic vanishes yeah. when you switch the television off? Well, none. You know, Ladies and gentlemen, it's, none. It's a, it's a, it's a uh, I would argue, by and large, if not completely, yep. uh, a, a, a construction of the media. You know? What but do I mean, you think also, about... I wanted to say, I mean, I think this is really interesting, that... All of these Western nations have passed these biosecurity laws in the last five years. Yes. Coincidence. How Leading extraordinary. Up. Again, and it's all led is, to yeah. this place where we can be locked down and curfewed and all this sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah. And none of it goes through Parliament. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, Parliament is essentially I mean, useless. I'm sure you're aware notice. that basically in Australia, we can't leave. You can't, no. you can't go to New Zealand either. Sure. You know, yeah. which is COVID-free yeah. apparently. Just as, we're yeah. supposed to be yeah. COVID-free. Yeah. I mean, there was maybe going to be arrangements where we could travel there for a little while. Maybe it was open for a little while, I wasn't sure. But, but, and also in England Throw too. Some and this is another kids. funny thing is if you're an illegal immigrant, you can just enter the UK straight off, you know, for mm. Calais or for a truck or whatever, no trouble, and you stay, but you can't leave. Isn't it weird <laughs> that people who, you know, who are like, who are coming from foreign countries that are COVID, well, if there is COVID, there's a lot of it, but, you know, they're coming in, no problem. And this is the same with Mexico and the United States under Biden. There's all these people flooding in through the Mexican border and yet Americans can't leave. And sure. there's a joke Candace Owens made, you know, she's got family who live overseas, I think maybe in, in um, I don't know where, but somewhere overseas. And you know, they were like, well, we'd like to visit the United States. She said, well, the best thing is, is get a flight into Mexico, walk across <laughs> the border and I'll see you soon. <laughs> Oh, sure. Look, look, this is all, it's, it's all incredibly topsy-turvy. None of it makes any sense. And there's a fundamental reason that it doesn't make any sense. Because it's bullshit. Yeah. That's why. It's bullshit of the highest order. And if you're, honestly, if you're in, t in, in any way sentient, or if you're not on the gravy train, yeah, yeah. and I think that's an important point, if you're not on the gravy train, mm -hmm. if you're not rewarded for your obedience through this thing, You've got to be suspicious of it. Yeah. You know, I mean, well, this is actually, surely. This is actually, I mean, obviously, obviously, it personally affects both of us. Uh, I mean, particularly you, because you're a musician and you're somebody who would tour once a year, right? How the fuck are you ever going to tour overseas again? Oh, I, it, my position at the moment is that's just not going to happen. Really? Yep, that's my position. Because what yeah. do you think of this vaccination passport bullshit they're floating around at the moment? It's it's certainly immoral. Yeah, it's certainly immoral. Isn't it it's against human rights? It's got to be in rights? breach of the UN Convention on Human Rights. Yeah, it's got to be in breach of the Nuremberg Code. Yeah, it's got to be in breach of all sorts of basic stuff. But you see, that doesn't actually matter because they control the media, they control the political class, and they control the courts. Yeah. So you can flap up and down, and I hate to be so jaded, but I am. <laughs> uh, you can flap up and down about the law and, and all this sort of stuff. But if you've got no court anywhere that's got the gumption to actually enforce any of this stuff, yep. it doesn't matter. Yeah. You know, you're not going to get anywhere. You it's know? scary, isn't it? And this it? is the position we are. Yeah. We are in where now it's become plain. And I actually think it's been plain for decades, really. But now it's become 
yeah. incredibly plain that the entire media class, the entire political class, the entire bureaucracy, the entire academia yep. is broken, yep. is corrupt, and is unfit for purpose. Do you know anyone yeah. who's had the vaccine? I know somebody who, um, who's immunocompromised. They, they were very worried about it all, and they, they took the first shot of the AstraZeneca, and they were sick, I think, for the first day, but then they started feeling okay. Um, and my mother, I know, is keen. You were saying your mother's keen for it as well. So, I mean, you know, there's obviously going to be a lot of people who are going to be taking this AstraZeneca in the next six months. I mean, I, you know, the vaccines themselves are a whole discussion, mm. but then there's also the moral part of the equation, mm. which is about coercion. Mm. You know, I mean, really, is it is it right to coerce people? And this is what's happening. If you're being denied the right to travel or work or socialise... It's or extraordinary, way, isn't it? It's, this is coercion. Yeah. Okay. So you're being coerced into taking what is you know, essentially an untested medical procedure. Yep. You're being coerced into taking that. Yep. That's extraordinarily immoral. Mm, you know, I mean, regardless of what's yep. in the damn things, and frankly, I have no idea what's in I have in no it. idea what's in it. who does? Yep. I mean, as if you could believe any of that stuff. I mean, <laughs> frankly, I mean, what? what you've been suspicious. lying to us for at least a year. Let's just be generous and say yeah. at least a year <laughs> about all this sort of stuff. Yeah. And now, this week, I'm going to believe you. Yeah. Well, no, I'm not. Yeah, you know? um, no, it's 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 very strange. And did you hear about that spike that was up in Queensland? And then, like, apparently it was like about five or six people in, in Brisbane, and then everybody in the whole of the, the, the Queensland. And this is a state that's very it's tropical. I mean, you know, there's a difference between wearing a mask in a cold, like when you go to the, like the coals in, in, in like a cold state like Victoria. Well, it's not cold in, in summer, but it's generally cold. You know. No global warming has managed to warm that up, unfortunately. It's been a very cold year, as I'm sure you've noticed. Very cold. Yeah. Very cold. And, very um, summer. you know, yep. people up in Queensland are having to wear masks in the whole, you know, right up the cans and across the other side. And, you know, so unbelievable. Look, look, they're, they're Darwin. At, at the outset, I just have to be really straightforward and say, I don't believe any of these numbers. Yeah, I, I don't believe. believe any of the science behind it. I believe none of this stuff. None yeah. of it. Okay. Mm. So I think, I think they have, this is my personal view. I think they probably or possibly have people in key positions who control the information flow or possibly software yep. or whatever it is, some mechanism that in key points, you wouldn't need that many of them, mm -hmm. in key points, you know, the chief health officer or yeah, some yeah. person, some bureaucrat. Well, he had Greg person. Hunt, the chief, he had the uh, Great Reset book uh, on his shelf. Minister, right. He had yeah. the Schwab yeah. book on his shelf. Someone yeah. took a photograph sure. in his office and there he was. All you need so is, is a surprising. few key people yep. Yep. or some software or whatever yeah. it is, whatever it's like mechanism. like a pyramid. Yeah, you just need a few people at the top of the pyramid. And you just control the information because these numbers that they come up with, yep. they always come up with exactly the number that suits their narrative yeah, at the yeah, precise yeah. moment it does. Yeah. And therefore, and then it's then highly suspicious. Like, when Nature we got does lockdown? not give you that. Nature no. does not give you the exact numbers you want. Remember we had this little spike, we had a five-day lockdown, and then, and then like, it seemed that really turned against Daniel Andrews because Lee Sales had flown down for a birthday party from the ABC, and she turned up, she was acting like Peter Credlin. Yeah. She, was, she was at a press conference with Daniel Andrews attacking him, and, and then it basically he ended it, and then that crisis just went away. You could tell he wanted to lock us down for another few more weeks sure. but because the abc attacked him he was like oh maybe we'll just let everyone out again and there was sure. nothing it didn't so, spread it just vanished the back to zero thing, the whole thing look i'm going to be straightforward about it the whole thing to me looks like an incredible psychological operation yep. it looks pavlovian yes it looks like the dog on the leash yep you know like oh you're behaving i'll give you a bit of room oh no yep. you're behaving badly i'm going to pull it tight yep it all looks incredibly pavlovian the globalists ladies and gentlemen are making yes. their move yeah. And they're taking our queen, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. We're going to talk about that and other things when we return on the report from Tiger Mountain for the second part of our chat with David Tussle.